Hello everyone, Kevin A. Creedon here, hauling a load today in this wonderful truck and tuck. You see this right in front of us, right here? This stack of bricks? Yep, that's what I'm hauling. Now, some of you guys might wonder why I have the camera pointed down here to where my hands are. I wanted to do that so there's no confusion so people know that I really am doing hand over hand for when I'm driving this truck. Before I didn't have the steering wheel set up quite well to the point where I was doing hand over hand and it wasn't that realistic. So for this I wanted to show that I actually am doing hand over hand and just make it for me a little bit more on the simulator side and a little bit more realistic now one other thing is because I can't see that well I'm going to actually step out of the cab and see how close I am uh, I'm not close at all Now I should be close enough. Now what throws me off in this truck is I put giant stacks on it so it would look cool, but they really defeat the purpose of the visual of uh, visibility here. And I'm only I'm nowhere near that kingpin. So of course I'm getting it from the side. Yeah, I'm nowhere near, so. So this will take a few minutes. Yeah. See, there's the trailer. There's the wide load trailer. And what that sound is means we're running low on air, so. So I'll get the trailer and we'll be off. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty close. Yeah, close enough. All right. So I have no idea where we're heading. It's set to GPS. All I know is it should be about, shouldn't take that long. I mean, we're in New Mexico. We're still gonna be cruising through New Mexico. We're not leaving New Mexico. I know that much. But what city in New Mexico, I really have no clue. I know it's not Albuquerque, because Albuquerque's kind of in the middle. Oh, and for those of you, you can actually see, I am double clutching. There we go. Of course, I had to hit the range and not the splitter. <laughs> uh, the fun of driving a truck. Yeah, I bet they're kind of scared seeing this come all the way here. All the way around like that. Uh, 
And then to make that turn to kind of slow myself down, I took it out of gear. So, and we should actually be in a lower gear here. I got a stop sign, so time to stop and wait. But yeah, so I've been doing good. I've been a little busy lately with class. Yep. Good thing the truck stalled. There was Kenworth coming. But yeah, I've been busy with a winter class. You know, it's one of those take it because you need it classes. So I've been trying to put, you know, I've been putting my full effort in with that and that's why I don't really make a lot, a lot of videos. I've also been doing a little bit of car hunting for those of you who know the other side of this channel, the car collecting, customizing, and all that fun. But, uh, yeah, I've been doing a little bit of that. Unfortunately, I've gotten a new phone, but I don't really know how to work the camera perfectly yet. It's just an experiment right now on, you know, how to get the best shots, best angles, best lighting. Now for that one, I actually didn't double clutch because we're going up a bridge and I don't want to have the rollback. That could be a bit of an issue, especially with a flatbed trailer. Well, really any trailer of this size and weight, but, but yeah, so again, I've been hunting a little bit. I haven't been finding a lot. I'm still looking for the car, a uh, couple of cars from the cars and donut set. I'm still looking for the, uh, matchbox, uh, Chevy stepside truck. I've not found that yet, but when I do, I plan on doing some basic detailing, really. Not that much in-depth customization where it needs, like, a repaint. Because to me, that truck looks so cool. I mean, the truck looks good. Matchbox did a faithful reproduction of the truck, so... Now what you saw there was I dropped it out of gear and was lightly ta uh, lightly holding in the brake since this truck has ABS. And then the light switched green. See here I'm just gently applying the brakes and the light switching green. So after lightly applying the brakes I hit the clutch and put it back into gear. And you just roll on. You still get the momentum. So... But this is just a light cruise. So yeah, I've been looking at cars. I've bought a couple of things off eBay and I feel really bad. I'm backlogged on uh, car reviews and, uh, or casting reviews and a little bit of history of the cars. Um, I bought something really big off of eBay, which if you guys have seen the channel trailer, you know what I'm talking about. And I still need to do that. I still need to do a video on one of my Christmas gifts you guys have seen the trailer you know which one I'm talking about so yeah I know that was that wasn't really that smooth oh come on come on climb it climb it climb it yeah we're getting there Slowly but surely. Now I'm actually going to play like one of the AI and be a little bit patient here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I've been watching my mom drive and other people around me drive. I've been talking to my mom about driving so that way I get the fullest of the experience and it looks better for you guys it looks like I actually know what I'm doing here when truth is this is how I learned how to drive I mean I've only taken a few you know test drives with people I've never really fully driven a car out on the road because I'm not legally permitted but let's just say I've driven a car once or twice in a parking lot where nobody was around during hours where I wouldn't hurt anybody so But I like it. It's enjoyable. I mean, at night, it's a little unnerving because for me, there's like, there's things that you can't see in the, in the dark, but 
you lose visual cues and all that. So. Now this is actually interesting. This is actually the only time where I've actually used hand over hand. I play uh, Forza and I'll do a recording of Forza for you guys too. Oh, what's this guy doing? Do I need to hit the engine brake? I don't think so. He's all the way up there. Yeah, I also like to leave a little bit of space because this is a big vehicle and you can't really slow it down too well. Oh. There we go. But yeah, um, Forza, I don't really need to do hand over hand. Actually, half the time with some of the cars in Forza, like your muscle cars, I just usually have one hand on the wheel and one hand on the shifter like this. But... Again, smaller vehicle, less of a turning radius. I'm doing about 55 anyway, so we'll have to wait. Just like I was being patient. But yeah, smaller vehicle, lower turning radius. So it's easier to just keep the car in the lines and you don't have to really mash the, or wrap the steering wheel. Excuse me. So, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was the SAG Awards. They were a couple of days ago as I'm recording this video, and, well, I've never really been one for, well, that's not true. I do like award shows, but as I've gotten a little bit older, and a little bit wiser, and a little bit more curmudgeon -y, Um, award shows to me really seem like, and the whole celebrity thing seems kind of, I don't know. I just don't like people getting honored for, oh boy. I don't really like how they're getting honored, a lot of people. Because to me it seems like they make you feel like their job is, you know, uh, what's the word? that their job is essential really and okay you know art art is good don't get me wrong we we need art I understand that because I mean this video game is somebody's art somebody had to draw these cars somebody had to program these cars in here but uh the thing that I don't understand is you know they feel so above it all they feel like they know everything and maybe that's just how I perceive it, but that's what I don't really like about celebrities and the whole Hollywood complex. Like, you get you get these ones who feel like they know everything, they've been through everything, they can talk to just about everyone and tell them how to live their lives. And, you know, maybe that's, maybe those are the exceptions to the rules. Maybe those are just the few. But it doesn't seem that way, you know? And those are probably the ones that get the most coverage, but yet... You know, you get some people in Hollywood who are redeemable. You get some people who are like, look, I don't know what it's like. I want to portray these tr uh, the story and these characters, how they were in real life. When you get the, a lot of people who do uh, movies that are based on true events or true stories, I need lights. Um, and those are the ones that I like, but, you know, I was just... With celebrities, I was never really a big person to buy into the whole celebrity thing. And, you know, they do this, they're worth this much money, they're rich. Well, yeah, but you figure they do a lot, maybe. But with all that money, a lot of them should donate a little bit more to charity, should do things, should give back. But that's just me. You know, I'm a simple virtual trucker now a lot of people want to listen to me I don't really have a valid opinion I'm just a guy on YouTube behind a mic with a steering wheel pretty expensive one at that and the other thing is I tend to feel guilty that I don't give enough back um, one of the things I know a lot of you guys already know this but I've made the Dean's List and this is actually my third time, my third time making the Dean's List. 
I've had a lot of s semesters. Uh, you know, I've been in college for five years, which for a four-year program, yes, I do feel bad about that. But again, also, too, there were circumstances beyond my control. You know, I did get sick. I did have a lot of things happen. So, but the thing I, f I feel bad about saying that I made the Dean's List because there's so many people who try so much harder than me who never make the Dean's List. And, you know, they study hard, they try hard, they do their best. You know, yeah, go around me, buddy. I, I know I'm going slow. But they try their best, they, they do hard, they study maybe more than I do. And yet, they never make that list. Or there's people that I know in my family who never got the opportunities that I got to go to college. And that's why I felt a little bad saying to some of my relatives, yeah, I made the dean's list. And I mean, everybody's happy for me. A lot of people are truly, you know, a lot of people are truly happy and uh, feel good that I made the dean's list. But me, I honestly, I feel bad about saying that because I feel like it's one of those braggadocious things that, you know, oh, look, I'm super smart. I'm better than you. I made the dean's list, which is not my intention to make people feel like that at all. And that's what I don't like about the celebrities talking to uh, regular civilians, you know. It's the whole... It comes off to me as braggadocious and arrogant and look... I did this, I did this thing that you'll never be able to do. And maybe that's kind of just the whole culture that I grew up in. You know, I, my grandfather, I've done an episode about him. It's like an hour long special. Um, I've, I talk about him and how he was pretty much just a regular guy, you know, worked from job to job, did a lot in his life, owned his own business at one point. But a lot of that is, you know, a lot of the reasons why my grandfather was the quiet type, didn't say much, was because he was afraid of people hearing him talk. You know, my grandfather comes from a time, he, he comes from the Depression era and around that era. So um, a lot of the time, oh, thank you, I can bypass. But a lot of the time, uh, a lot of the times he didn't speak the greatest of English. You know, what he learned comes from a middle, like the highest education he had, I believe, if I'm correct, was that he, his highest education was middle school. Because he had to work a lot, you know? He had to work when he was a kid in the Depression era. And that's one of the reasons why I really do respect and appreciate my grandfather. But, you know, there are also some situations that happen. And some things that can never be unsaid, can never be taken back. Come on, go. There are things you just can't undo. But, uh, one of the major things, like... I still remember a lot of the stories and one thing was like, you know, a lot of the time, there were times where he actually did step in and say things that you wouldn't expect of him. And the other thing about that is there were times where he'd step in and say things, but they would be the wrong things. Anyway, going back to that, that's kind of the that's kind of the culture I grew up in, you know. It was the don't let people make you feel less than you are. And I'm always fighting that, the feeling less than I am. Um one of my recent epiphanies was I went to a Catholic elementary school and I look at all those I look at a lot of the people who I thought didn't like me or just who I thought you know all these crazy things like the voices in my head were just bad you know they it was all just self-doubt the I'm not good enough to be here with them and then in college the I'm not good enough to be here with them what I realize is 
from social media and when I talk to these people, it was never any of that. It was all me. I mean, yeah, okay, there were a few people who were like, you know, made nasty comments or made fun of me because I was overweight. You know, those were few people. I never really was bullied. It was a lot of the talk behind my back, and then I think half of that was just manufactured in my mind. You know, I don't know if a lot of that was real, tell you the truth. And it's sad that I lived a lot of these, that I lived a lot of my young years in that, in that whole mindset that, oh, you're not like these people. They don't like you. You have to overcompensate for a lot of things. Which, you know, it's a half and half story, guys. I mean, half of it is bad, but half of it is good. A lot of that feeling of, a lot of that insecurity did make me overcompensate, and that's probably why I did so well on things. Why I did so well in school, why I overstudied, well, not overstudied, but why I put a good amount of time in, and all that fun stuff, all that regular education things. And I listen to you guys, how, you know, um, I read your comments, and how a lot of you guys are like, congratulations, good job, keep up the good work. And that really does help me. So. I don't take you guys for granted at all, and I'm pretty sure you guys realize that too. I'm pretty sure I'm, I come through very well. I th like to think that I'm very transparent in these videos. There we go. Drifting a little bit. Again, night driving. Not not the biggest fan. So. And I can't say that I totally don't listen to a lot of those motivational speakers or life coaches. I watched a few videos of a guy when I was feeling down uh, this past summer. And, well, some of the things helped. I mean, yeah, the advice was vague, and I'm pretty sure if I just sat down and thought through things, I would realize these things, and I'd feel better about myself. But sometimes you just need to hear somebody talk. Sometimes you can't really talk to yourself and figure everything out. And sorry about the lighting, guys. Where where I'm at, it's like so uh, parts of the day it starts raining. Parts of the day the sun keeps peeking out, and that's what's kind of throwing me off here. Although the one where I had the little fender bender with the other semi truck, uh, I think he didn't realize I was rolling out, or maybe I was in the wrong. Again, I've never taken driver's ed because I didn't have to. You know, there was no chance I was going to be driving in high school. I mean, I never give up hope on that. But right now, in the near future, it looks like I won't be able to drive. So. I'm okay with that. I mean, I found other alternatives, and I do get around pretty, pretty well. I'm a college student, and I commute to my school. So. Really, I don't think I absolutely 100% need to drive. Now, can I get somewhere real quick in an emergency? Uh, not really. If I want to take paratransit, I need to call about a day in advance. I think I've explained that. There's Lyft, which I've used, but Lyft's a tad bit expensive. But for the most part, regular daily life things that you wouldn't expect. I get around pretty good. This is how I like to do it. I just like to roll to the stop. Drop the truck into neutral, which you can't see because my display says visit uh, service or yeah, visit service, I believe. But what I do is I just pop the truck into neutral, coast, hit the brake, like gently apply the brake, come to the stop, 
And then now I'll put the truck in gear, hold the clutch in a little bit, push the gas in a little bit, and stall my truck! <laughs> Yeah, nope. Sometimes I do it well, sometimes I don't. I also think I'm in high. There we go. If I was in low, that would have been better. High gear. Looks like we have a stop up there. Engine brake time. Looks like we got a green light. Yeah, the light. I'm not going through that. Truck should be in low. But yeah, so here's a better idea of what, here's a better picture of how I'll do it. So right now I've got my foot on the brake. And they've got the red. So, I should probably push in the clutch a little bit. Okay, now they have the green, so foot on the brake because we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Now they got the yellow. They've got the red, we've got the green. And we're slowly getting there. Oh, I put it in high. Oh, my goodness. Okay. But, yeah, most of the time these guys, from what I've seen, it's easiest just to put the truck into neutral, drop your range back down. Like here, I'll actually put the truck into neutral, hit the brake. Now I'm dropping the range, and then I'm also going to drop the splitter to low. And then let's do it from first gear okay clutch in red that was one low that was one high this will be too low too high well that's too low this will be too high And now we're coming to a stop. I actually like to just roll to the stop. Brake, clutch, back to one, over rev. Here's too low. Well, that was too high. Here's three high. And I really don't need to switch it out of the, for the lower ranges, the one through four. I don't really think I need to switch it between high and low. Ah, uh, yellow, I'll roll through it. Now this one's definitely red, so... Or no, it's yellow. No, it's green! Sometimes colors play with me, that's yellow. There we go. But yeah, so I'll throw it back in the one high and just roll. See, driving at 18 speed, everybody, so a lot of the uh, non-manual community, the non-manual transmission community, the automatic, a lot of those kids at school are scared. I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm playing a video game, but I, I wouldn't be too scared of driving a manual. Not saying that I want it for my daily driver for, you know, a few years. I want to learn how to drive the car first, and then I drive it as my daily driver. Alright, like, come on, switch. Switch, please. There we go. Trying to double clutch in the low gears doesn't really work for me too well. There we go.
Yeah, again, like I said, I don't really see why a lot of people get a little upset or, you know, feel that driving a manual transmission is the hardest thing. It's not. It's just something you get used to. You need a lot of practice. I mean, for me, it's kind of the equivalent of learning how to ride a bike. Now, they tried to teach me when I was younger how to ride a bike, but due to my sight and my balance, which nobody really knew at the time that my sight was bad, uh, I actually bought a bike at 16 years old, or no, 18 years old, a bicycle, not a motorcycle, not a dirt bike, nothing fancy. And I taught myself how to ride at 18 years old. And I still have that same bike. So. Now, I just thought it was a cool looking bike and maybe something to buy as a piece of art. Because I had never seen those. I, I really don't know what the full intention was. But I learned, I taught myself how to ride. And we were where I learned was in between two industrial highways. Like there was a little neighborhood in between two industrial highways. So I taught myself on the little side street and I was like, okay, here's what we'll, here's how I'll do it. I'll learn how to use the hand controls, the, you know, handlebars, and I'll learn how to turn. I've got this giant hill here. Oh, that's not good. Over -rubbing. But I have this big hill here, and, well, we'll learn how to turn, and we'll just do other things here. You know, we'll learn how to turn, and then we'll learn how to use the brake. Now, the brake for me is a little different. Oh, boy. Well, that was bad. Distracted driving, but... But I didn't hit him, so that's good. So the brake, mine is, you know, it's one of those you hold the, you slowly hold the brake in a little bit, so you learn, so you uh, slow yourself down. It's not like you're stopping on a dime, which I guess is like car brakes in a way. It's more like truck brakes, really, like these brakes. So with that. I learned how to use the brake, and then I just had to learn how to pedal, and that came pretty easy to me, too. See, this is where hand over hand comes in handy. See what I did there? Oh, there's a train coming. So that was pretty much how I learned how to ride a bike. I taught myself, which I'm not sure if I told that story. See, I feel like I have a million stories, but when I get behind the wheel and I have the camera on, I feel like none of these stories want to come out. I always forget. So. I wonder how much longer I have here on this trip. I mean, I'm pretty much driving the entire scale of the entire scale Arizona here, but But 
But I don't think I have that much time left. I do need to eat my lunch and get ready to go before my bus comes. So. Sorry, my ring's hurting me a little bit. See, I have it weirdly sized. It was a gift from my mom for Christmas. I, She says I liked it when I saw it on TV. I didn't know, really. I didn't remember, so it must have been a good while ago. But I like it. I think it looks really cool. So... Well, you know what, guys? I think I'm actually going to end the video here. And I think I'll come back to this later. I'll go park the trailer. And... You know, I think I'll shut the camera off. Go park the trailer. And that'll be it for this video. So, alright, guys. I'll leave you here with this. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it wasn't too long for you. I don't know how long this is. I lose track of time driving, so. Alright guys, see ya.